Hello, I'm Luke Nella and welcome to Best View Plays of the Week. In this episode we have thick-skinned heavies carrying their games, a stunt-driving scout, and a Brothers in Arms game with something not quite seen before on the show. Let's rock! The KV-4 Battle Barge seems to have been popular with our players lately. This week's example comes from the EU region where Mega Goo tests his armor on Malinavka. The battle begins and Mega rolls out. A rival KV-4 is spotted, and it soon becomes apparent that a small bush isn't enough to conceal this behemoth. The enemies are starting to punch through the armor, so Mega drops down into cover. The rival KV-4's death inspires a platoon mate into charging forward. Mega goes back to pretending to be a hedge and concentrates on trading shots. As the opposing team starts to thin out, the KV rolls forward to find more of them. Shots keep hammering the barge, but with little effect. As soon as the barrage eases off, Mega takes the opportunity to pick up a few kills. Finally, a bush big enough to hide behind. Mega snipes at a panther and tries to finish it off as it runs. An unseen AMX CDC returns fire and takes the KV down to one-shot territory. Angling the hole saves the tank from destruction, but Mega is clearly getting nervous. The Lurva is spotted, and after a few tries, gunned down with APCR rounds. The Reds are down to a single IS-2, which Mega picks off as soon as it's spotted. It's done. Talk about a well-earned Spartan, plus 12,320 points of damage blocked by armor and a very solid contribution to winning the match. Well played, Mega Goo! Now we move over to the North American servers with RJ scouting in a T-49. This tier 9 standard battle is fought over Prokhorovka. RJ charges straight for the middle of the map and lets a rival scout have a taste of the 152mm howitzer. RJ makes good use of the T-49's mobility, showing off some wild handbrake turns. The derp gun seems useless until a solid hit reminds everybody of its raw power. The opposing team are three tanks ahead and a hit from the AMX-30 drives our scout into retreat. RJ recovers quickly, however, and pays back the damage with interest. It's time to end it. RJ sets up an ambush, loads a heat-seeking shell and... Enjoy your trip to the garage. They are not amused, however, and the T-49 takes a shell up the exhaust when fleeing the sea. RJ parks the T-49 behind a bush, lighting up a bunch of enemies for teammates to cut down. When they are down to the last two, it's time for Operation Cleaner. The Waffenträger gets a drive-by beatdown at nearly 60 kilometers an hour, and the Bat Chat RT dies as soon as the reload is done. A good mix of spotting and combat scouting there, with some great driving. Nice work, RJ! We move over to the EU servers and two steps down the American light tank tree for this week's Confederate. Nikon arrives at Lakeville and charges up the lakeside road as we've seen in many replays before. A super Pershing comes barreling down the road and dies in moments after Nikon takes out its truck. The IS-3's track is too hard to break from here and the Centurion gets away as well. Nikon abandons such tactical finesse and starts throwing metal at everything that moves. A T-34-100 blows up, and then an Oho burns to death, and a Yaktiga 8.8 .8 gets hammered to scrap. Not bad from a Tier 6 scout. Careful now, Nikon inches forward and takes aim on the badly damaged Yaktiga. Just three shots and it becomes kill number four. 
The remaining enemies are holed up in the northwestern corner of the map. Nikon puts a couple of shots into the Tier 9 Waffenträger and decides parkour is the best way to get at the RU-251. Banzai! Unfortunately, the ram isn't quite lethal on its own, but it's still an impressive takedown. A near miss on the Kamikaze medal, but Faden, Orlok, Confederate, Sniper and five kills on top of an impressive Tier 9 battle. Now let's hop over to the Asian region for a crucial contribution featuring the fearsome ST-1. The commander of this Tier 9 Soviet heavy is Schmembert, and their battle takes place on Winterberg. The big bruiser gets to play top dog, and with only six Tier 9 machines in the match, this is our hero's battle to win or lose. The ST-1 claims a position and opens up on the enemies. The 122mm cannon dishes out plenty of hurt before the enemies manage to return so much as a single hit. A T-34 becomes the first kill, followed soon by an overeager IS. It looks like the team has melted away, however, and the SD-1 is running the risk of getting surrounded. Ouch! That really hurts! That's it! The SD-1 may be outnumbered, but it's a lion surrounded by hyenas. Bring it on! Two more opponents charge in, but Schmembert and the remaining ally tear them to pieces. A KV-4 rolls in from the front, while two others give it fire support from the rear. The battle barge goes for the ally, giving the ST-1 enough time to find some cover and angle its hull. There's no room for a mistake and none are made as our hero dismantles the lower tier heavy. That's four down, three more to go. The Ferdinand gives chase, but it's not fast enough. The ST-1 chooses a battleground, picks up the Tiger 2 and proceeds to dominate the 30 with sheer engine power. Schmembert is about to go looking for the arty when it charges in from the rear, shotgun held ready. The ST-1 turns, rotates the turret and beats the enemy to the punch. Whew. A great match with an exciting ending. I have no idea how to pronounce your call sign though. The episode finale comes from the American region with Synthetic, Bucky Bucky Doctor, and RJ fighting on Karelia as brothers in arms. Remarkably, this is the same RJ from the Scout replay and driving the same vehicle. RJ leads the way east and opens the match with a good hit on an Object 140. The tank destroyers start dealing heavy damage to the enemy force, with the first kill going to the Doctor. Synthetic has taken heavy damage and pulls back behind the Doctor's Jagdiga. RJ decides that the front line is no place for a light tank and goes looking for a safer position. The Doctor picks up another kill, with Synthetic following suit a moment later. RJ gets into position, and after watching the Doctor pick up yet another kill, fires the derp gun at long range, scoring a fifth kill for the trio. Two enemy medium tanks attempt a sneak attack from the rear, but RJ is in position to spot them. The Doctor's Jagdiga takes a couple of hits, but the enemies are utterly demolished. A T-54 attempts to take out Synthetic and very nearly succeeds. RJ chases after the retreating cockroach and stops it flat. Why did this SPG risk coming here? Synthetic really doesn't care as that makes it three kills each. The platoon spreads out to look for the remaining enemies. Hunter's luck favors the doctor who finds two of them going for the capture circle. As the hunting tiger is getting ready to pounce, an artillery strike blows up the T-30. Thanks, Bat Chat. The KV-4 rolls out to do battle, but the Doctor just shoots out its track and Synthetic finishes the job with a long-range shot. Meanwhile, RJ has been hunting down an AMX 1390. Its luck runs out at the enemy base and the end is swift. Maybe it's RJ's handbrake turn that makes the shot miss. Maybe not. Either way, the T-95 has revealed itself. Two shells hammer the big TD close to death and Synthetic drives in for the final nail before RJ can get close enough to fire. That just leaves the Arty, 
which the T-49 tracks down like a bloodhound. RJ's first shell doesn't quite get the job done, but the Allied SPG is once again happy to help. Good game. Nice! That's 12 kills for the platoon, and I'm very glad you uploaded several replays for us to use. Thank you, brothers in arms, and very well played. That was one German, two Russian, and four American tanks this week. So much for the Russian bias, huh? I'm Luke Neller, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Prokhorovka, Pokharovka. No. Ravka, 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 Ravka. Vrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr